Everything from what groceries they buy to what goes on in private. No sex between husband and wife. But tonight, one family says no to the prophet and breaks away. We're considered apostates and wicked, not around here. Before their little girls are forced to be married off. I always worry that I would have a creep as a husband. Now, a haircut equals freedom. I want her bangs and as short as her hair is. An 18-year-old can finally learn to read. Nodge. Close. Dogs. Good. But one staggering question remains. Will the real world be too scary? And the pull of the past force them back? Why do people stay when what you love the most is ripped from you? Breaking polygamy. Here now, Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening. On this day after Thanksgiving, when so many families are still together for the holidays, members of one community are dealing with the pain of being forced apart from their loved ones. Not by war or natural disaster, but by the bizarre orders of one all-powerful leader, their so-called prophet. The restrictions he places on followers are so severe that the sect has even been called the American Taliban. But ABC's Amy Robach got inside to uncover the secrets of the sect. Travel deep into the desert to the border between Utah and Arizona, and you will find a hidden world within modern America. No internet, no television, no contact with the outside world. For over a century, this has been home to the Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints, or FLDS Church. Sunsets and sunrise and clouds. That was like our life. We saw those things every day. And you don't realize how much you take it for granted. Just like you was in a painting. I mean, that was cool beans. It brings back a lot of memories for sure. 18 year old Willie Steed grew up in Colorado City, population 8,000. So you never knew you could find such gorgeous places in the worst a place and to live. The people who live here are members of a radical splinter group of the mainstream Mormon church. For decades, they have locked themselves away from the outside world. On the surface, life seems almost normal. Oh, where are you going? You got a protection. <laughs> a father coaching his children on the finer points of an all-American sport. But sitting on the sidelines are two sister wives in this not-so-modern family. We're very different in personality, in character. To hear them talk about it, their polygamous lifestyle sounds almost wholesome. I would rather mop the floor and have the house perfect and the children all lined up. And Barbara loves to socialize. <laughs> one likes to sew and one doesn't. Teamwork makes it light. There's a good phrase, many hands make light work. But behind this facade of normalcy is something you can't see. Every aspect of this family's life, who they marry, what they wear, even what they eat, is controlled by the man they call their prophet, Warren Jeffs. Obey the prophet when he speaks, and you'll be blessed. Disobey him, it is death. Warren Jeffs is no longer living in this community, but he is still in control from behind bars. New details about even more abuse young women suffered inside the sacred temple of the church compound. Jeffs had over 80 wives, but he was sentenced to life in prison for the sexual assault of underage girls. Explosive audio tapes of Jeffs and his young wives talking during their sexual encounters were played during his trial. We spent a little time together sitting in your chair with the ladies around each touching you during the six years since he was first arrested 2020 has been reporting on the secrets of this sect we were granted rare access inside the community and found to our surprise that his followers still have not left him in homes offices, on computers, and even cell phones. His presence is everywhere. We miss our prophet. We're in Jeff's. We know he is innocent and that we all yearn for his deliverance. The people believe Jeff's is God on earth, but when caught on tape while talking to his brother in jail, he seemed increasingly unstable. The Lord's still dictating. 
This is not a test. This is a revelation from the Lord God of heaven. ABC News began its investigation last year after Jeffs began issuing bizarre edicts to his followers. It started with an order to destroy all the children's toys. At home, then you couldn't have any toys. You couldn't ride bikes either, because it gave away all our bikes. I didn't even get a rat chance to ride mine before I gave it away. Every week, there were new, strange directives from prison. Now it is down that you cannot eat corn. No sex between husband and wife, no touching between husband and wife, no kissing. And every woman that is out, you are now privileged to change your name to the word Jeffs so that you're now reserving your body and your resources to Warren. He selected 15 men to father all the children in the community. If a woman wants to have a baby or whatever, she has to go on one of those 15 men. But then she has to have two other men with one of the 15 men in the room to witness. Anybody who thinks that Warren Jeff's incarceration ended his rule in this community has no idea what they're talking about. He's in many ways more powerful because now he's martyred. But the most destructive and arbitrary dictate of all was his decision to banish hundreds of men, women, even children from the community. Even Warren Jeff's brother Wallace has turned against him. Why are women cast out? Probably the biggest one is they're accused of killing unborn children. Uh, through miscarriages. Since Warren took over, 500 to 600 men have been thrown out. Can you pay to stay? Yeah, money has a big part of it, but it's mostly giving of your wives and your family completely to Warren and letting him control them. Willie Steed's family was torn apart after Warren Jeffs banished his parents. What happens in your home and with your family and, your, and what happens to your loved ones is hell. He comes from a family of 38 children and three wives. His mother, Suzette, remembers the day when her husband was banished. He just turned to us and he says, I've been given my revelation, and I never thought this day would come, but I am no longer your father or your priesthood head. So I'm asked to leave and go far off to repent. You haven't heard from him at all? No. He told us, do not contact me. It'll be very detrimental if you contact me. You cannot contact me. Do not call my number. I will not have this phone anymore. Her husband had just been cast out by the church. There was no warning for what the church calls excommunication. He just kept grabbing my hand. And he says, I love you so very much. Not long after her husband was forced to go, church leaders told Suzette that she too was cast out, but she refused to leave without her children. Why do you think your mom was asked to leave? Mom was one to ask questions. She wanted to know where her future was. And there was no future in that. And she knew it. Last January, fearing that the rest of the family would stop them, she and her six daughters secretly slipped out of the house. For the past year, we've been following the Steed family on their journey into modern America. When we come back, what lies ahead for the Steed family in a strange new world? and the consequences of defying the prophet. Make sure we are gentle with her. We return to 2020's Breaking Polygamy. Willie is now an outsider in his own hometown. With no money, no means of support, he turns to a group called Holding Out Help a kind of underground railroad for those escaping from polygamy. He's done all the career preparation and he's got through that. They find him a home with Pam and Ron Jensen. Okay, down here's gonna be my room. And here's my bed, my bath bag, everything I came with. Check it out, I still got the keys to our house. <laughs> Because of his decision to leave the religion to the FLDS, he's now known as a son of perdition. Son of perdition means you are Satan's property and that you will burn in hell for the rest of your life when you, when you leave this life for what you have done. Are you a son of perdition? If I am, well, I sure love it. If this is hell, well, I'm glad I stepped out of heaven to find it. It's the very first thing we start with. While helping him write his first resume, 
Pam discovers something shocking. You want me to write it down? I'll write it down. Willie can't read. Did you realize how little you knew? Yes, I did. Is it being in that religion, I knew that I was going nowhere. I wasn't growing in life. I couldn't change because, for instance, I didn't know how to change. Ball, ball, wall. When he starts his first lesson with Pam's daughter, Amanda, the going is tough. Hold on. Dodge. Close. Dog. No, no. No, that's right. Dog and then... Dogs. Good. So Willie is reading at a first grade level. Change part to the word cart. K -R -T. I should have learned this when I was in first grade. This is good speed. You're doing good. According to Willie, most children in the FLDS get no more than a grade school education. If they want you to go to school, they'll pay for it. But until then, you're pretty well uneducated as far as anything goes. There's nothing anyone can do to help because the FLDS is protected by Utah's homeschooling law. Oversight of any family that homeschools their children is strictly prohibited. Carol Lear is a lawyer for the Board of Education. The local school has no right to go into the home or demand from the parents to see the curriculum they're using or teaching. So the Utah State Board of Education has no idea if parents are teaching the correct curriculum and how long they're actually studying or working as students. There's no assessment requirement. Uh, there is no penalty if the parent doesn't do that. Inside the FLDS, every textbook must be approved by Warren Jeffs. During a visit to their publishing plant in Colorado City, we were surprised to see women assembling history books about the Short Creek Raid, a government crackdown on the FLDS that happened in 1953. At the same time Willie is learning how to read, his mother and sisters are settling into another house provided by holding out help. Willie's sister Suzanne talked to us about education inside the FLDS. How disappointing was it when you realized when you came outside and you tried to go to school or see where you were with other kids your age, how little you actually had learned from an education standpoint? It was extremely frustrating for me because in there they assure you that you are teaching your children everything they need for this grade level. The homeschools inside FLDS are like no other school system in America. Their science and history are often fiction. They don't teach about the moon because they don't believe man landed on the moon. So you guys didn't believe that an astronaut had actually landed on the moon? Actually, they were taught that God led Neil Armstrong away from the moon. So this is interesting to me. So tell the children I love them and I will come and gather them up if they are clean and pure. Warren Jeff's image is on every notebook. And when 15-year-old Gloria shows us her report card from homeschool, we see that religious studies were the top priority. We did priesthood history. You had to go through all their names like Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, John Taylor, John W. Williams, and Warren S. Jeffs. Instead of studying math and science, she spent her days at school copying Warren Jeff's proverbs. When you were writing it, did you believe everything you wrote? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about all of that now? Well, they were just lying to us. These days, Gloria's free to study what interests her, so she copies from the encyclopedia into what she calls her body book. AIDS, you get it through sex, and it's a terrible disease that they haven't found a cure for. Gloria never heard of AIDS until she left the FLDS which made us wonder what else the FLDS censored from their people. Did you guys ever learn about the Civil War? Mm, yeah, some, <laughs> some of it, but it never really stuck. Do you know who Ronald Reagan is? Do you know how presidents are elected in this country? How? No. Have you ever heard of the Electoral College? They were taught that Warren Jeffs was the president of the United States. Did you guys ever hear who Santa Claus was? No. no. He's supposed to have a magical sleigh that visits all the children in the world. Well, he didn't visit us. <laughs> it's been a month since the girls left Colorado City, and we were there with them on their first day of school. 11-year-old Ada is about to enter a new world. She's starting fifth grade. Ada, my lovely daughter, don't comb your hair. 
Today, she got up at dawn so her mother could comb her hair into those elaborate braids. I like French braid because it helps her hair thicken up. Women in the FLDS never cut their hair. We were trained your hair is your crown and you need to keep it up on your head. According to their teachings, they will need their hair in heaven. Women will be asked to wash and the man's feet as an anointing. And I want to do that. Ada is still caught between two worlds. The prairie dress she once wore is gone, but she still hides her body under high neck, long sleeve shirts. Yet her mother is disappointed about how easily all her daughters left their old life behind. I keep wanting to tell her, pull your top down, darling. And when they come in and there's this little cleavage show, and I'm like, children. Suzette's upset because those old fashioned dresses are all about faith. Women cover up from neck to ankle because their bodies are considered sacred temples. Three years ago, we talked with Lizzie Jeffs, the town dressmaker. It's easier to see each other as a person, a whole person, inside and out. As they settle into their new home, the girls still hold on to the fragments of their past. Time to play, time to play. Within the FLDS, everything, even a simple game of cards, is based on the bonds of kinship. Six-year-old Nellie calls this the memory game. This is Leona, and this is Marie, and this is Danessa Marie's daughter. And we're making them mates. Put them together, she has mates. It's the FLDS version of Go Fish. You have Marilyn's father. No, nope, Go Fish. Over three months have gone by, but no word from their father. They still have no idea where he is. Do you remember your father? Mm-hmm. What do you remember most about him? Well, he had gray hair. He always wore this blue work suit, and he always wore a middle hat. Do you miss your dad? Mm -hmm. I think all of us do. She's worried that she'll never see her family again. We're considered apostates and wicked now that we're out here. An apostate is a person who deliberately leaves the religion. So you're not allowed to talk to any of your old friends and family? Not really. How does that make you feel? Mm -hmm. Makes you feel probably sad, huh? Mm -hmm. When we come back, the power of a haircut. We weren't allowed to cut our hair in the U.O. is considered wicked. How do you feel about being wicked today? Oh, this is really great. Here we go, boys! When we first met Willie Steed, he was trying to pop wheelies on the ice in North Dakota, stealing a moment of fun. He was on his last construction job for the FLDS. Right, Cowboys! At the age of 18, he's already been working for 10 years. You're doing flooring, you're packing rolls of carpet. How many young boys are shipped off to work construction like you were? I could easily say over a thousand. I know contractors from around the area hate the FLDS because they can always underbid them because they come in with an army of 40 young boys who are not being paid. For the children of the FLDS, childhood is a short season. Many start hard labor at an early age. When Oprah visited the compound, she was told play is considered unproductive. You're there to work, and they'll work you to the outer end. Many boys get pulled out of grade school. They put in long hours, often seven days a week, with no pay. How many hours in a day would you work? At first, it started at seven and went to nine. It was incredible to see that as a kid, you could do such slave labor. You saw a life of manual labor with no education and no way out. Yes. It's like you're under a, a wall that's just, just toppling on top of you, but you can't hold it. And the church and everything is just feeding that wall with weight. But for the girls of the FLDS, motherhood was the only horizon. When we talked to women inside, everyone shared the same goal. I wanted to 
have a family. I wanted plural wives. My father had plural wives. I liked having more than one mother. I liked having a lot of brothers and sisters. Our belief is that there are spirits up in heaven waiting to be born here. And we want to offer them a loving, good home. Young girls living inside the community could imagine no other future. What do you see yourself doing? In five years, being a mother of a family. How many kids do you want? Oh, as many as I can have. But the Steed sisters always knew that marriage was a future they dreaded. Their prophet, Warren Jeffs, assigned wives to men without asking for consent. Why did it scare you? Because I knew that I'd have to marry a man that I didn't even know. 11-year-old Ada told us she was terrified. I always worried about that I would have a creep as a husband. I always wanted a husband that was the kind to help you. Even in a prairie dress, it was always clear that Gloria was a rebel. All the men down there are jerks, and I don't really want to marry any of them. They're pompous asses. Do what I say. Do what I say. The father rules. Men were in charge of us. They were the only way we were going to get to heaven. We had to love them no matter what we decided. We had to share them with other women. Alisa Wall is a cousin of the Steeds. She wrote a book about her escape from the sect. At the age of 14, Warren Jeffs forced her to marry her first cousin, so she knows why her cousins distrust men. We had to submit, we had to obey, and through it all, we had to hold them on a pedestal and believe that they were, an, in an essence, a god in our lives. It's all about the men. So don't be embarrassed or anything like that. Alisa's love. been with the girls for many of their firsts. Be better. So you mm -hmm. just want to make sure that you always have the right size around your chest. The girls have never been measured for bras before. And right in between a B and a C, correct? Mm -hmm. And makeup has always been a forbidden temptation. That looks bad. 17-year-old Suzanne wants to help support the family. So Elisa hired her as a seamstress at her baby clothes company. For a girl who's lived such a sheltered life, getting on the bus is a small act of courage. What's been the hardest part about living outside of everyone and everything you knew? I was never, never allowed to walk out of the yard alone. That just wasn't done. Every day takes the girls further from the strict path they once followed. But the milestone in their transformation is the day they all decided to cut their hair. Maybe to about here. The hair is such a big part of what makes a woman and what makes you worthy. I think it's so easy to make your identity surrounding your hair. And when you cut that off, it's releasing that identity and stepping into new and stepping into the unknown. And, and that can be scary at times, but it's a liberating thing. What do you want to do? I want that bangs and as short as her hair is. That was quite a time for us. You get emotional, though, when you talk about it. Knowing that if I met my father today, he would be displeased with me. But also knowing that I am not living to please him anymore. We have to move on in life and we leave things behind. And we weren't allowed to get our hair on the UO as considered wicked. How do you feel about being wicked today? Oh, it feels really great. When we come back, after their taste of freedom, will their mother take it all away? My husband is, it's not a perdition right now. Do you think I'm okay? No. And. That damn thing was. Can we ask you a couple questions? Just a simple question. We search for answers. You won't even acknowledge I'm here. In a town of walls. Just trying to find out, what are you doing? Excuse me, excuse me. Hello? Once again, Amy Robach with Breaking Polygamy. After a year-long investigation of Warren Jeff's destructive edicts from behind prison walls, we traveled with Willie back to his hometown, 
looking for answers about who really runs this town now that their god on earth is behind bars. This is part of the FLDS? Yes, this is. He agreed to be our guide through this strange and clandestine world. Willie showed us the multi-million dollar house Jeff's ordered his people to build for him while in prison. They said if we build it, then it would melt the bars or whatever in his jail and he would be released. Jeff's also forced the people to relinquish all their possessions to this distribution center. It's under the control of his bishop. Here, even the most basic needs like food, water, even clothing are carefully rationed. Who decides what they can bring out and take home? The bishop and Warren. As we head towards the entrance, the massive doors begin to close. Is Warren Jeff's in charge? Is he still? But when we ask people all over town, no one would answer questions about questions? Warren Jeff's. Just a simple question, whether or not Warren Jeff's is still in charge of the town. I don't get to respond. You won't talk to us? No? Nothing? You won't even acknowledge I'm here? This woman shielded herself from the cameras with a pamphlet, Articles of Faith. Suddenly, we realize that we're not alone. Warren Jeff's secret police, known as the God Squad, is on our tail. What is the God Squad? Warren tells them to patrol the media at all times. So they're the following vehicle. us, or they're monitoring us. They know us. where we are. They've already took pictures of our vehicle and everything. There they are again. So we decide to confront them. Hey, just trying to find out, what are you doing? Excuse me, excuse me. Hello? These tactics are menacing, but harassment by the local police against former members of the FLDS is far worse. This year, the Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against town officials accusing them of acting as an arm of the FLDS. Mike Watkiss reported about this conspiracy in his film, Colorado City and the Underground Railroad. You do not hold a position of authority in that community unless you are at FLDS. How have they largely remained outside the law? Because nobody gives a damn. Because local police have been charged with abusing their powers, they are now being monitored by the county sheriff. Is it frustrating that a convicted child molester is still exacting so much control? Yeah, it's, it's troubling. Everywhere around us, there was stony silence and anger. Why? Get that damn thing. Why? Why? You go jail. You go jail. It was not the first time we'd witnessed the fury of the FLDS. Yeah. This is what happened when ABC News last reported on Warren Jeffs. The man who just knocked down that camera is Willie Jessup, former bodyguard to Warren Jeffs and one of his most loyal followers. But last year, after Jeffs was convicted of rape, he decided he'd had enough and left the FLDS. So Warren is still in charge of the FLDS? Oh, very much so. Why do people stay when what you love the most is ripped from you for no real reason? Warren controls people the same way that David Koresh did. So there'll be no excuses! Jimmy Jones did. Anybody wants to get out of here, can get out of here. He threatens banishment if his dictates are not obeyed. So a mother is now saying, well, in order for me to preserve my children by God, I need to remove myself. We tried to get into one of the most tightly secured buildings in the town. Behind that gate is the maternity clinic of the FLDS, the epicenter of their faith. Hello, this is Amy Robach with ABC News. We're, we're standing outside the clinic and we just wanted to ask a couple of questions. Can we come inside? Hello? They just hung up on me. It's impenetrable. But three years ago, we were granted unprecedented access to this clinic. We met a young mother who sang us a lullaby by Warren Jeffs. Love warms and cheers us in winter's cold weather. And mid the summer's heat, faith makes us strong. The spiritual mission of women in the FLDS is to bring more children into the world. We have five children, <laughs> and I asked Heavenly Father for a little girl baby, <laughs> and he gave me a girl baby. <laughs> this is the only time the FLDS has ever allowed video cameras behind these closed doors. You don't have leukocytes, but you have ketones. Shirley Barlow is a certified midwife and has worked here for almost 40 years. 
On this day, she's doing a checkup on her sister. I have had 14 children. I'm 43, so I'm still just young. Only midwives birth the babies here. Actually, the gift that we have of bringing a special little baby into life is through Heavenly Father, and that's what brings us together. This clinic once birthed about 400 babies every year. But that's over now. From behind bars, Warren Jeffs has banned all physical contact between married couples. As a result, the birth rate has now dropped precipitously. Every week we hear new reports of the insanity and the craziness that's going on. The mothers are losing their children and they're being given to other families. The 40 women were just kicked out. Families are just being torn in pieces. This is a severe human rights issue. The whole medical team was also ordered to leave the community, including Shirley Barlow. Can you open your mouth for me real big? And Miriam Holm, one of the few FLDS women with a master's degree, was also told to leave town. So you don't have doctors, medical professionals? None. There is not one left in this community. There's no such thing as a doctor. There's no such thing as a, as a active midwife. No one knows how many families have been broken up by Warren Jeffs, but even his brother Wallace was not spared from that brutal purge. Warren broke up your family. Yes, and I filed a lawsuit against Warren to bring my family out of hiding so I could see them. What does put into hiding mean? They have places in different locations around the country that nobody knows where they are so they can hide the wives and children from their husbands. I don't look at how I suffered. The, really, the victims in all of this is the children. It's seeing their families being torn up, not having fathers, the mothers being cast out. It's the children who really are the victims in all this. For the Steed family, that price is clear. All that 11-year-old Ada has of her father is the photo that once hung on her wall. Look at those little He's still there. Does it help you to see that every day? Does it really help you? I'm really glad that you have that. She hasn't heard from her father in five months, whose banishment prohibits him from having any contact with his family until the prophet brings him back. You can hold on to the good things. But Ada knows that if Warren Jeffs allows her father to return, he will make the family go back to the FLDS. I wouldn't go with him. I don't want to go back into it. Even if it does cause losing dad. At least I have mom. What makes you certain? Because I want to have a life. The conflict between family and freedom is tearing her apart. We're not supposed to be mad at him, but why did he do all that? Why did who do what? She holds Warren Jeffs responsible for the breakup of her family. <laughs> Ada, it's okay to be angry. Her anger drives her to the ultimate taboo, defacing a photo of Warren Jeffs. Do you want to tell me what hurts? Everything. Just, we didn't even have a life. Next, Suzette makes a surprising decision. What if he comes back and what if he asks you to come back? I would say yes. I love him a lot. Will she force the girls to return to Colorado City? It's been 10 months since Willie left Colorado City. As he settles into his right, new home with the you. Jensen's, they help him claim the childhood he never had. The thrill of his first ride on a roller coaster. The triumph of balancing on a waterboard. The brave new world of Facebook. What have you learned about yourself since leaving the FLDS? I've learned that I have the guts to stand up for myself. I learned that I can walk away from life and I can leave everything behind. Presents for the birthday boy. It's Willie's 19th birthday. Okay, so I have to read that. 
birthday. Happy birthday. Soon. Son. Son. With the help of his host family, he's made some progress in his reading. And so I say to Ron and Pam, thank you so much for being the parents that I didn't have. And I don't mean that rude in, in any mean way, but there's no way my parents in that religion could have given me what they've got. And now the only thing I want to do is turn around and help my family get that. After all, that's what family's all about. He makes a wish and has a dream. One day, do you want wife and children? Yeah. One wife or multiple wives? We'll stick with one. <laughs> Even in the next life, I believe. <laughs> As for his mother, she longs for the security of the home she once knew. So many things fuel us as humans. And with Suzette, I think for her, her fuel is something she left behind. The hardest part for her, the fading hope that her husband will ever return. What if he comes back and what if he asks you to come back? I would say yes. I love him a lot. So he's the reason why you would go back? Yes, he is. But two weeks ago, crushing news when Suzette was told by friends still inside FLDS that her husband had made a decision. He chose the religion over Suzette and her children. He will never return to them. I don't think I'll ever lose that love. I just pray that he's well and okay. In that religion, you always, you always understand that the husband puts his religion over you. Religion will always be more important than his wives or his children. Okay. Despite the heartache, Suzette sacrifices her love for her husband for the sake of her daughters. I have seen these girls blossom into something I didn't even know that they were. They were just, they were hiding themselves down there, their true selves. What makes the house the home is love, love, love. love. Eight, Suzette's now found a job and is hoping to be able to someday buy a house. You proud of your mom? I'm very proud of my mother for what she did. She's a very strong woman in my eyes. But I'm very upset on my father for leaving us behind. And as a result of that, that hurts. But life is life. And in the end, mom will be the hero. So. That's what matters. <laughs> now she's fully supporting her daughters in a world of infinite possibility. Nellie started first grade this year. I want to get my ears pressed really bad. You get to wear dangly earrings. And all the girls are flourishing at school. <laughs> There's a C A B B A B. Those are darn good grades. So in the eyes of all of your friends and some of yes. your family members, you're damned. Yes. <laughs> but you're laughing. Do you believe you're damned? <laughs> I love being damned, but this is bam. <laughs> but we wondered about the thousands of other people banished and isolated by Warren Jeff's regime of fear. Verily thus saith the Lord unto you, my servant Warren. I, the Lord thy God, am well pleased with these, my daughters who are present with you at this time. So when does the power of Warren Jeffs end? Oh, if somebody could show us that crystal ball. He is their idol, and they worship him. And no other man can be a prophet until he is gone. But Mark Shirtleff, Utah's attorney general, has come under fire for not doing enough. Unless you have a willing victim to come forward and to trust you, uh, and to be willing to testify against their abuser and against their prophet, you cannot successfully prosecute. As we left Colorado City, we asked Marilyn and Suzanne to revisit that road they took to freedom. This road led you to what? Future where we are right now. It's been said that the only journey is the one within. We really did it. The past may never be past for them. What do you think? You want to finish this road? I'm going to start. But this family feels sure they will find their future together.
That's our program for tonight, but stay tuned for Nightline after your local news. And we hope you continue to have a great Thanksgiving weekend with your family. I'm Elizabeth Vargas. For all of us at 2020 and ABC News, have a good night and a great weekend.